Eventually, you will reach a pivotal moment in your tulpa creation process, when your tulpa first starts responding to you. This is not always a clear-cut moment, and for many people, responses in the form of coherent words and sentences may take even more time to start coming. Because this is such a highly anticipated moment, many people look for signs of responses for their tulpas and conclude that irrelevant feelings and sensations are their tulpas' first non-vocal responses. Worse, others may be overly cynical and refuse to acknowledge legitimate responses from their tulpas. To help clear up the confusion, let's start by describing how your first response should feel. Some tulpas respond with words from the outset, especially if they are the uncommon variety that develops within a day or two. Imagine hearing a conversation you had earlier. You don't physically hear the voices, but you can imagine how they sound. That is how your tulpa will sound when you first start to hear them. Some tulpas can only respond with a word or two at a time, at first, but with more attention and practice they should be able to rapidly progress onto full sentences and regular conversation. Don't expect that to happen, though. The majority of tulpas can speak coherently right away, and expecting anything less is setting your tulpa up for failure. You might get legitimate responses from your tulpa that do not come in the form of words. Some tulpas communicate through emotions, direct expressions of thought without words, or simple movement of their visualized forms. This is another reason to pick a starting form for your tulpa, by the way. If any of those things happen to your tulpa, and you feel reasonably confident that you do not consciously will them to happen, then you should consider them legitimate responses. Just as important as spotting real responses from your tulpa is making sure not to become fixated on false positives. Your tulpa's first communication will be just that, communication. It won't be some random feeling on your arm or leg, it won't be some random thought popping up in your head about ice cream, and it won't be a phantom voice you heard sometime during the day. Your tulpa needs attention to communicate at first, and if you are not actively paying attention to them, they will not be able to communicate with you in any way. Constant presence and interjection of thoughts usually takes a lot of practice even for people with well-developed tulpas, and a new tulpa generally cannot give you a suddenly interjected thought as its first sign of sentience. And remember, your tulpa is a person who wants to communicate how people do. Would you choose to communicate with someone by only texting them pictures or poking them without saying anything? Of course not. This brings me to one final topic, head pressures. The concept of head pressures has been talked about a lot in tulpa communities, but I have avoided mentioning it because they are the largest source of false positives I have seen. Head pressures are a rare way in which your tulpa may send initial responses through targeted sensations of pressure in a part of your head, usually in the front. These should only come in response to specific questions or stimuli, and should have some amount of reason behind them. Head pressures are not random, constant, or painful. Most of the time, these are just headaches. Headaches are actually very common when making your first tulpa, and are a good sign that you're making progress. If you experience non-painful pressure or tingling sensations in a small part of your head that are both consistent and in response to your questions or some other stimulus, these might be head pressures. Otherwise, it's probably a headache, even if it doesn't hurt all that much. I keep stressing it in every video, but it really is that important. You have to treat your tulpa like a person. Your tulpa isn't some weird thing making your head do strange things. They want to talk with you, form a bond with you, and experience life with you. So expect their first communications to be along those lines. This is the end of the In Detail video series, and if you still have questions, be sure to check out my Discord server, where I and others are always glad to give you our best answers.